Good morning, Church, and uh, a very warm welcome to you this Easter Sunday morning. What a great day to be able to gather and celebrate Church together. So wherever you're uh, joining us from, if you're away somewhere with parents or you're at home in a flat in London, um, welcome to you on this glorious day. Let me read to you something from John's Gospel that just reminds us of the story of today just to set the scene. So I'm going to read from uh, John chapter 20, The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there but did not go in. Then Simon Peter who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth had been folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on for me, to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. What an amazing bit of good news. Let's bow our heads. We're going to pray together as we commit our time to the Lord. Father, thank you for this day of days. Thank you for this truth. May it resonate in our hearts as we celebrate, whether we are on our own or with our families in a big space or a small space. The truth remains the same. You are Lord, you are risen, and you stand amongst us. We welcome you here today, almighty God. Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you all stand? We're going to go back to Celia, and Celia is going to lead us in some song and dancing together. Thanks, Steve. We'll be singing One Way Jesus. So get on your feet and sing and dance along. Is anybody excited about Jesus tonight? Trouble times is 
sing. Come on, you sing. You're the one. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you. We're living on for you. You're the way. That was brilliant and so much fun. And now the moment you've all been waiting for is a game with Tim. Tim, are you ready? I certainly am, Celia. And I hope you're all ready at home. But before we dive into this week's game, should we quickly recap the events of last week? Because you guys really committed. I mean, boy, did some of you commit. Just briefly, the cutlery that you have in your houses, some of it's nice normal cutlery that I expected like this. Some of it's really cute cutlery. I'm okay with that. Well, I'm slightly baffled by is why some of you laid out your cutlery with a fake pineapple clearly presented in the middle of it. Um, and should we quickly mention some of the hats that you happen to have lying around your houses? If we go according to increasing levels of enthusiasm, you have the why are you making me do this, to the oh, I quite like wearing two hats at a time, all the way through to gosh, I can't believe you're making me do this, but I'm going to do jazz hands anyway, and then you have Jonathan Morse. And then there's always someone who decides to consolidate their three separate photographs into one brilliantly combined photograph ready to go. Bravo! So well done all of you, it was a fantastic effort all round and now it's time for this week's challenge. So I hope you all have your email enabled smartphone to hand. I hope you all know my email address by now which is tim at stmikes-stees.org.uk I think that's right but it will appear on the screen as if by magic. Um, and the first thing that I need you to get a photo of yourself today doing is a photo of an adult balancing a toothbrush behind their ear. Go! Cue the music. The next thing I need you to have a photo of is an adult with a sofa cushion balanced on their head. Go! Next, I need you to have a picture of an adult wearing a toothbrush behind their ear, balancing a sofa cushion on their head, and balancing a Bible on top of that. Go! Well done! Oh, rubbish! So I'll be announcing the winner of that via the chat function, uh, which I think is on this side of your screen, later on in the service. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Lou with our Bible reading. Now you've all got your Bibles to hand. Lou, is it Mark chapter 16? Ah, oh, brilliant, Tim. Thank you. And you're right. We are looking at Mark chapter 16. So Mark is one of the four Gospels. That's the books in the Bible that are written about Jesus's life. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So Mark is the second one. And chapter 16 is right at the end. It's the final chapter of the book of Mark. And we're going to read the whole thing. It's kind of a big deal. It's about Jesus' resurrection. So if you're ready, let's go. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the side. And they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest. But they did not believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out the demons, they will speak in new tongues, they'll pick up snakes with their hands and they'll drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on people who are ill and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven. And he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a big story. And to help us understand it, we're going to head over to Megan's house now. So, Megan, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Lou. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter to you from me. Kids, got a question for you. What is your favourite thing about having a party? Is it the party hats? This is my homemade number while we're on lockdown. Is it the balloons? Is it the giving and receiving of presents? Or is it the yummy food that we get to eat at parties? Now, while I'm eating my Doritos here, why don't you tell those kids who's watching this with you at home what your favourite thing about a party is? Now, my favourite thing about a party is that we get to celebrate somebody or something that they've done. And in our house, when it's somebody's birthday, we have a party, we get everybody in the room to say something that they love about that person. It just makes people feel loved and it's a great way to celebrate. And today, on this day, Easter day, we have got such a reason to celebrate and to party. In amongst all that's going on in the world at the moment, the not seeing our friends, the not being able to go to school, the worrying about people that we know and love, today we have got a reason to party because Jesus is alive. He isn't dead, he's risen, hallelujah. And today we are gonna celebrate that together. We are gonna party together today. But I'm gonna take my party hat off now. Just imagine the scene with me for a minute. 
Um, Jesus has just died the most brutal death, the most horrible death on a cross. Why? Well, because we put him there really, because God is perfect and we are not perfect. And what that meant is we couldn't get to God anymore because all the things that we do wrong when we speak unkindly, when we do mean things, where we're just a bit thoughtless in our words and actions, it just meant that it got in the way of us and God and we couldn't get to him anymore because he is perfect. But God wasn't having that. He made us to be close to him. So he did the most incredible thing. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us with all our sin, with all our wrongdoings, with all the things that we get wrong on a daily basis. Jesus died with them on the cross. So Jesus has just died the most brutal death and then he was put into a tomb and a massive stone was put in front of the tomb and guards were put there to make sure that nobody could get in. And on the third day, on the Sunday, Mary Magdalene and some other women went to the tomb to see Jesus. But when they got there, they realised that he wasn't there. They arrived and he wasn't there. Where had he gone? You can imagine them being like, who's stolen Jesus? Where is he? What have they done with our Lord? And as they were coming out of the tomb, they were met by two angels who said to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Jesus had risen, he was alive. So the ladies ran back, the Bible says, to tell all the other disciples that Jesus was alive. He wasn't dead, he had risen. So why does that give us a reason to party today? Why does that give us a reason to celebrate? Well, I'm really quickly gonna suggest three reasons to us why Jesus rising from the dead gives us a reason to party and celebrate today. The first is this. Shout it out at me. What does it say? Forgiven. It says forgiven. Because Jesus died on the cross, because he rose again, we can be forgiven. Because as I said, when Jesus died on the cross, he died with our sin and all the wrong things we do. And when he rose again, he showed that he was bigger than all of it, bigger than our sin, bigger than death bigger than it all. And one account in the Bible says that when Jesus died, just before he died, he shouted out the words, it is finished. Now that wasn't a cry of like defeat, it's finished. It was a cry of victory. It is finished. I've done it. The, the great rescue plan of getting us back to God again, of bringing us back to the Father again, had been done. Jesus had done it on the cross. Our sin was gone. We are forgiven and what that now means is there's nothing 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 that we can do to make God love us any more or any less and he gets to be with us there's nothing that can separate us from his love we are forgiven that is a reason to party today second reason I've got for us to party hope we have hope because of what Jesus did at Easter we can have hope Hope that because Jesus rose from the dead, one day we too will rise. Hope that because Jesus definitely was who he said he was, then we have hope in all those things, that he is a healer, that he is our provider, all those things that we want him to be, we have hope that he is. And it's not a hope like, I really hope Liverpool are gonna to get to win the Premier League, or I hope that I get to have chocolate for breakfast this morning. Because that's like a wish, isn't it? Whereas biblical hope is almost much more of a certainty. We can be certain of who Jesus is and we can have be certain and hopeful that because Jesus died and rose again, one day we too will rise like him. So second reason to party, hope. One more reason for you this morning everybody. Our final reason that we can party on this day. What does this say? Shout it out in your homes. Freedom! Freedom! Because Jesus died on the cross, I can be free. I, I'm, I get to be free. What am I free from? Well, I'm free from the sin, the, the bad things that I do that hold me back. And that means that I'm free to be the person that God created me to be. And also because God forgave me, 
I'm then free to be able to forgive other people because I know that hope and that forgiveness that he gives me. So the final thing is freedom, free to walk with God, to be the people he created us to be and to be able to forgive other people. So kids, let's party today in amongst everything else that's going on in our world at the moment. Today we can celebrate that Jesus isn't dead, he is alive. We can know his hope, his forgiveness, his freedom today. I'm going to pray for us. Why don't you close your eyes where you are, maybe hold someone's hand if you're with somebody else right now and let's pray together. God, thank you that you didn't want to be separated from us. Thank you, God, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross so that we can be forgiven, that we can have hope, that we can have freedom. And we say today, Jesus, thank you for what you did for us on the cross. Thank you that you conquered the grave and that you rose again and that you, you died for our sins, you did it for us. And thank you for what that means to us today. Help us to party and celebrate you well today, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So kids, I don't know what that might look like in your homes today to have a party and to celebrate, but I encourage you to do that because Jesus is alive. Now, I don't know if you have seen Agent C anywhere, but I think she's waiting for us. Megan, over here. I'm hiding out in church. Hey everyone, Agent C here, and Steve has hidden some balloons around the church for this week's Bible verse. Shall we go find them? agent needs a secret spy tool and mine is my trusty paper clip. It's so useful for so many things including breaking in to church. I mean, I'm joking. Uh, let's see if it works on these balloons. are seven words that make up our memory verse for this week. Shall I read them out? We have not risen. He, he again, is here and is. So, hey everyone, well done if you were a top secret agent and managed to work out our memory verse for this week. Here is the correct answer. It is this, he is not here, he is risen. So massive well 